who are you? Yeah, you, right there. I bet you know of a lot of ways to answer that question. You could tell us your name, first and last, the day you were born, your grade in school. You might even tell us the street you live on. You could give your height and your eye color. You might even tell us about your parents or your siblings. And all of those things would give us a picture of who you are on the outside. But if you follow Jesus, there's something even more important happening on the inside. In the Bible, we discover truths that Jesus spoke and promises that God inspired people like the Apostle Paul to write down. And these truths paint a powerful picture of who you truly are. God says that you are a child of God. You are a friend of Jesus. You are a brand new person in Christ. You are forgiven. You are uniquely designed for good works that only you can do. You can go to God at any time for any reason. God will provide everything you need. That, my friends, is the true story of who you are. And it's a wonderful feeling. When you live with confidence, knowing that you are already loved and chosen, others can see God at work in you. That's why confidence is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. The reason why my feet can't stop, my heart can't help but sing. It's a wonderful feeling to feel your love for me, to feel the joy you bring. Your love is the answer, so I sing to you. The reason is you, Jesus. You're why I'm singing out. The reason is you, Jesus. You're what it's all about. Cross, you set me free, and I'm thankful that you love me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're the reason. I can't stop this feeling. <laughs> Jesus, you're the reason. I never wanna shake this feeling. <laughs> Jesus, you're the
Hey everybody, I'm Graham. I've always had the dream of becoming a professional singer. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. I'm kind of afraid to perform in front of other people, but lately I've been starting to gain confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. I think it might help if I didn't have to perform all alone. Like, maybe if I was in a band with a guitar player? And someone on the drums? And maybe a keyboardist? I think a band is the way to go for me. I wonder how we would all sound together. Two, three, four! The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish all through well, despite how that sounded, I actually did feel more confident. So I guess what they say is true. There is strength in numbers. Or there's confidence in numbers. With the band, you never feel like you're alone. In today's story, we'll hear about three guys who were in a really hot situation, but they didn't have to face it alone. I wonder if my band needs a brass section. No, probably not. See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Daniel, chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon liked to go big. Build me a statue. Of course, your majesty. Granite, marble, <laughs> copper. I'm thinking gold. Gold! Pure gold. Wow! Okay, six feet tall, seven taller. 20 taller, 77 taller, 90. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. We'll need a supersized furnace to smelt that much gold. Then supersize it. Commence the smelting. So the king's craftsmen melted down tons of gold and shaped it into an enormous statue nine feet wide and taller than two and a half telephone poles. They set it just outside the city in the broad plain of Dura. Mmm, such a finely smelted specimen. We must invite everyone to admire my statue. So the king instructed messengers to summon all of his officials. Three of them were Jewish men who had come to Babylon as captives, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's a royal decree. That I can see. Are you all coming with me? So the three friends arrived at the plain of Dura where all the other officials had gathered. A messenger from the king called out loudly, This is the king's command. When you hear the sound of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes, you must fall down and worship this golden statue. Worship a false god? That's worse than odd. I wouldn't even give it a nod. Oh, and FYI. If you don't do it, you'll be thrown into a blazing furnace. <laughs> Immediately, music began to play. Every single official threw themselves down on the ground except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And let me tell you, their refusal to bow did not go unnoticed. Who do they think they are? I think we should make things hot for them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Several officials dusted themselves off and went straight to the king. King Nebuchadnezzar, may you live forever. Thanks. Will do. You told everyone to bow down. As soon as they hear the sounds of the horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes. But these Jews you appointed don't serve your gods. They refuse to worship your gold statue. Even when they hear the sounds of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes? Even when they hear the sounds of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes. Oh, now I am very angry in a very big way. The king sent for the three friends. Is what I hear about you true? Don't you serve my gods and worship the gold statue I set up? 
We will not bow. Even when you hear the sounds of horns, flutes, zithers, lyres, harps, and pipes? We refuse to kowtow. Even though you'll be thrown into a blazing furnace? This ends now. Even if we're thrown into a blazing furnace, the one true God will save us. But even if he didn't, we still wouldn't serve your gods or bow down to some golden statue. Uh, that didn't rhyme. Nebuchadnezzar's face burned red as a ripe tomato. <sighs> Make the fire seven times hotter. Tie them up, throw them in. The king's strongest soldiers grabbed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knotted heavy ropes around the three friends and then shoved them into the roaring flames. The king peered into the blue hot heart of the flames and then leapt back in surprise. Didn't we throw three men into the fire? And they all deserved it. Look, I see four men walking around untied. The fire hasn't harmed them. The fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Sure enough, a fourth figure stood there with the three friends. An angel? Or perhaps Jesus himself? Dumbfounded, the king rushed to the door of the furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you who serve the Most High God, come out. The three friends walked out of the scorching flames completely unharmed. The royal officials crowded around to see. Their hair isn't singed. Their robes haven't burned. They don't even smell like smoke. King Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed that, as usual, he went big. May the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be praised. He has sent his angel and saved his servants who trusted in him. No other God can save people this way. So, I'm giving an order about the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No one may say anything against him. Well, what happens if somebody does? Well, they'll be snipped in tiny pieces and their homes turned into piles of trash. Go God! god. Go, go God! Go, go, go God! Go God! Go God! Go, go, go God! The king even honored Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and gave them higher positions in the kingdom. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a ton of confidence, didn't they? They stood for what was right even when they knew what was at stake. And they stood together. All three were thrown into the fiery furnace and miraculously they weren't alone. God was in there with them the whole time. That's how it is with us too. God is always with us. In fact, after Jesus died and came back to life, one of the last things he said to his disciples was this. You can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. So that means when you have to do something scary, God is with you. When you feel like you're too tired to move, God is with you. When you need strength, God is with you. And when you're with a band of friends who know you and care about you, God is also there with you. God loves you so much and he won't let you face this life alone. So here's the one thing to remember today. Trust that God is always with you. Remind yourself when you're feeling less than confident that you are never alone. Well, I should probably get in some practice with my band. Didn't sound very good earlier. I think we need a little Band-Aid. Get it? Band-Aid? I'll see you next time.